today we are going to take a close look at docking with the contract Explore Kerbin. This contract requires us to dock two vessels together. So we are going to create and launch a vehicle capable of docking with the space station that we inserted last episode. This will have us installing our first reaction control system, otherwise known as RCS. Then we'll take a detailed look at how the docking maneuver itself is performed in the easiest way possible given our current technology in the game. Let's get started. Taking a look at our contract, here it is, Explore Kerbin, and we'll go down here to the objectives. Docking on or around Kerbin is a stepping stone to building greater things. Plus, it's one of the few times when ramming things together is encouraged. So our only objective is to dock two vessels on or around Kerbin. And then we get a little bit, not a huge payout, but a little bit of a payout here. Notice though, I'm going to draw attention to the word on. You don't have to be actually in orbit to satisfy this contract. You can do it on the surface and build whatever kind of goofy crafts you want and just simply put them together and that will work. However, that is not what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be looking at how do we do docking in orbit because that is probably what most people would want to see and being able to dock vessels together in orbit is indeed a stepping stone to building bigger and better things. I also have the contract science data from space around Kerbin. Again, always grab the free ones. Now we are gonna go into research and development this time and unlock ourselves a new node. And the one we're interested in here is advanced flight control for 90 science because this is what gives us a variety of different thruster blocks and also monopropellant that is required in order to power said thruster block. So we're gonna grab that one then we're going to get started with our build. Now we do have a vessel that can get ourselves into orbit. It was mission eight here. There it is. It can carry three Kerbals, has enough fuel to sort of do some work in orbit as well. Uh, so all we got to do is take this thing and modify it so that it can dock with our station and go up and visit Jeb. So all of the modifications are going to happen though with the orbiter. So I'm going to take the booster off. I'm going to park it over here to the side. Now, I can just leave it here. It is kind of cluttering up my view, and it is always possible I might lose it, especially if I leave the vehicle assembly building and come back. So I'm going to show you how you can save this booster. Over here to the left, at the top left, we have Enable Advanced Mode, and we get a whole pile of new icons. Most of these are for filtering your parts in different ways, but I want to draw attention here to sub-assemblies and if I click on this sub-assemblies what it gives me is a way of saving a collection of parts which we refer to as a sub-assembly so I can pull that sub-assembly and use it in different vessels and it's the easiest thing in the world to do you simply have to drag this over and drop it into this sub-assembly drop zone like that you get queued to give it a name um this is probably just going to be temporary I'm gonna call it booster and then you can save it and now I can safely lose this, and if I want to, I can grab this and just, there it is right there. So now it's been saved over there to the side. In fact, what I like to do, once I get some boosters that I'm happy with, and I'm not going to modify them any further, what I like to do is save a whole collection of boosters over here for a whole variety of payloads, and that will really speed up my builds because then I'm just building the payload, picking my appropriate booster, slapping it on. And we'll talk about that in a future episode, but for now let's get into making this thing so it can dock. Now I need to put on a docking port, so we're going to go over here and we're going to go to pay, oh no, coupling. There is the Clampatron Docking Junior, and you can actually, the, most set, the thing that it expects you to do I think is to stick it on the end. It, it, fits on the end of the Mark 1 capsule very well like that. Uh, and I think that is what I'm going to do, but I'll just another option is you can put these on radially like that. And that actually works reasonably well, but uh, you, if you want to give that a go, go ahead. I'm going to stick it at the front because I think that's what people expect me to do, and I'm going to keep it as simple as I can. Now you might have noticed in doing that I took away the Mark 16 parachute, which was the main shoot for this, and these two little drogues that are left behind aren't enough to slow this down safely when we come in for our descent. So I'm going to remove those and replace them with the bigger Mark 2-R radially mounted parachutes put two of them on there and that will be enough to slow this thing down. I think I'm going to take 
these lights. Just kind of slide them down a little bit here. So there we go, that'll make that part of this safe. Now what we need to do is think about thruster systems. So we're gonna go over here, command and control, and in here we have our RCS blocks. These are reaction control systems that we use to fine maneuver our vessel towards our docking port. But these run on a different type of propellant than the propellants we've looked at so far. If we go over to here, it says it requires monopropellant. So not solid fuel, which we've used for our boosters, not liquid fuel and oxidizer, a third type called monopropellant. So you need to make sure you have monopropellant aboard. Now, every capsule comes with a supply of monopropellant that I've been taking out to save weight because I didn't need it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put that right back in again. And that gives me 10 units of monopropellant. Now, if you are comfortable with docking, 10 units of monopropellant should be enough for you to dock comfortably and then undock again. So if I were doing this in my own game, I would probably just leave it exactly like that. But this is kind of a docking tutorial. I suspect many people watching this uh, might be docking just for the very first time. And you're probably going to want more than 10 units of monopropellant so that you can fly around and practice and not worry about running out of fuel. So we're going to go over here to tanks and down here we have our first monopropellant tank, the Stratus 5 Rondified Monopropellant Tank. And each of these holds 20 and I'm going to put on two of them. So that's going to be 40 plus the 10 in the capsule. So that's going to be 50 units of monopropellant. That should be plenty. And I'm going to put them, let's see, put the snap on, I'm going to rotate them to like that. There we go. I'll uh, stick them right here. Let's get rid of all these extra windows. <laughs> there we go. And they kind of stick out sort of funny like that. So I'm going to take the move tool. And we're just going to slide them in about halfway. Just like that. So they don't quite look so bad. I, th I think that's going to look okay. So there we go. Now we've got an ample supply of monopropellant. Let's put on some thruster blocks. So again, these are under command and control. And there's a bunch of different ones here, so let's go over them quick. Let's start with this one, the Place Anywhere 7 Linear RCS Port. So if I just stick this on here so we can take a look at it, there it is there. It is a single thruster port, so it can only thrust in this one direction, and that is it. And the other one here, the Place Anywhere 1, is the same idea, it's just a smaller version of it like that. Frankly, I think it also looks a little bit better too. So these are single direction thruster blocks. Um, you could put a bunch of these all over it. They are really handy when you get into more complicated builds, but I'm gonna actually, and for other reasons too, but I'm gonna actually not use these. Instead, what I'm gonna do is look at the, oh, let's start with this one, the RV-105 RCS thruster block. These, This one here has in this case, four that go off in different directions. So that gives me the ability to thrust in four different directions. And if you right click on it, you have a bunch of variants that you can now, it's five different directions. Now it's four different directions, but more like that. Uh, three different directions and two different directions. These variants can be really handy in more complicated ones. I'm gonna go back to this one. The one beside it is just a smaller version of it. The big one, has a thrust power of one kilonewton, while the smaller one has a thrust power of 0.1 kilonewton, one tenth as powerful, but of course, a lot less mass as well, and it will use less monopropellant. These big ones are way too much for this little ship. I like the little ones. I only get into the big ones if I have really big ships. So I'm gonna throw these ones away. We're gonna use these little ones here. Now, what you wanna do when placing these you want to take a look at the center of mass and you want your thrust balanced across the center of mass and you want to be able to thrust in a whole lot of different directions so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to four-way symmetry I'm going to go down here towards the bottom there they are snap back on and we're going to right as close to the bottom as we can put four of them like that now if I were to thrust with these right the thrust would be balanced, they'd be all at the bottom of the ship and that will try to get the ship to rotate. So I'm gonna grab another one, four and I'm gonna put them also up here towards the top, about an equal distance on either side of the center of mass. Now, keep in mind the center of mass as you use fuel will move around a little bit, 
So you'll never get this precisely, but if you want to, you can put this to the test. Now, the truth is this is, I'm almost sure, good enough because the reaction wheels in the capsule are very powerful and typically you don't have to get this super well balanced. But if you want to get it super well balanced, I can show you how you can do that really easily. All you have to do is launch your vessel. We're gonna press Alt and F12 to open up the console menu and we're gonna go into the cheats here and we're gonna set an orbit and we're just gonna put ourselves temporarily in orbit, again, just for testing purposes. So, if you wanna test the balance of your system here, don't put on the SAS. Instead, just put on RCS. You can click on it to turn it on or you can press R and that will turn it on as well. And then on your key, I'm gonna press I. I will get this thing to try and thrust up on the screen. So I'm gonna press I. There we go. And you can see it's starting to rotate a little bit. So that means I got a little bit more thrust at this end than I have at this end. And I got two ways to fix that. Number one, I can increase, I can decrease the thrust on this end by moving the thruster blocks more towards the middle. That will decrease the amount of torque they apply. Or you can right click on them and you can bring down the thrust limiter like this, right? You can bring it down to some smaller value. If you put on SAS, that will stop the rotation. Let's take SAS off again, and let's press I again and see what that does for us. So, thrust. You can see now these are very well balanced. But the truth of the matter is, it isn't really necessary. If I put this on to 100 again, and I put on SAS and press I, notice that it's not rotating. The reaction wheels here are more than enough to hold it in its attitude. So you can look at the nav ball, it's not moving around at all. You're simply thrusting in that direction. So if you want to balance your thrusters, especially on more complicated, larger builds, this is the way you do it. Typically though, you don't have to worry about it too much. So let's revert back to the vehicle assembly building and continue with our build. Now, while we're on the talk of thruster blocks, let's actually take a look at these and look at some of the more details we got here. Um, again, I looked at the thrust limiter. Another button here is the show actuation toggles. And if you're not seeing this stuff, just make sure you do have advanced tweakables to uh, toggled on in your settings. But this gives you a lot of control on what to do. So right now on the on position, these thruster blocks will help me do yaw, pitch, roll, move por port and starboard, dorsal and ventral, forward and aft. So just to go, um, yaw, pitch and roll we've talked about before. Port and starboard is left and right. Dorsal and ventral is up and down. And fore and aft is forward and backwards. Typically with thruster blocks, you're going to use them mostly for moving left, right, up, down, and forwards and back. Not for yaw, pitch, and roll, because the reaction wheels are perfectly adequate for yaw, pitch, and roll. So what I like to do is turn off the yaw, pitch, and roll on these thruster blocks, and I'm gonna do the same thing down here. And that way, if I have RCS on, and I decide to just reorient the vessel, I don't use monopropellant and do that. You will use a lot less monopropellant if you turn those off. All right, so this thing is getting, I think, pretty good. Now, one of the things that uh, I don't particularly like is I don't like this very flat uh, thing at the top that doesn't feel very aerodynamic. I also think docking ports, I like to think of them as vulnerable parts. I don't like them in the airstream while we ascend. So if I go over to aerodynamics, there are really small nose cones, but I haven't unlocked them yet. I only have the big one that I could get. That looks really kind of goofy. So what I'm gonna do, so I'll just show you a trick with the fairing. We're gonna go to payload. I only have the 1.25 meter fairing. We're gonna take this and then I'm gonna flip it upside down. One, two. And we're gonna put that right on top of the docking port. And now our fairing's being built downwards rather than upwards. I'm gonna flare out a little bit because I do want to make sure to clear the lights and stuff like that so make sure to clear the lights and we're gonna bring it down and in and now we have a fairing that is down rather than up uh, I can change the colors I can put that on clamshell like that but you see how that kind of works like that now I, I even have now a bigger flat surface but that's easy enough to deal with I'm just gonna put nose cone on top of that 
And so that makes this now a lot more aerodynamic and we can ditch this when we need to. Now, the fairing automatically ends up in the staging. Let's actually put that in a staging group, probably around here after this engine will probably be when it will come on. But I would also like to get rid of the nose cone. Now one of the things I can do is I can right click on the docking port while I'm in flight and hit uh, undock. But if we take a look here, I do have this button here that says enable staging. And if I click that, this docking port is right, it's this one, is now in the staging diagram. I can now put this with my fairing so that now when I stage using the space bar, this fairing will deploy and this nose cone will detach at the same time and there that looks pretty good okay I'm pretty happy with that let's put our booster back on stick that back there on the bottom actually I'm gonna make one more modification this booster has these very large AV-R8 winglets that are there for bringing that center of drag down but also give us some aerodynamic control but I've unlocked a new control part if I go back up there to parts Go to command and control. I now have the advanced inline stabilizers. This is the same deal as the small inline reaction wheels, which provide five kilonewtons of rotational torque. However, these guys are three times more powerful and it is a 1.25 meter part, which makes it ideal to stick into a booster like that. I don't need it for the orbiter, but this gives me actually a tremendous amount of control on the booster. So much control that I can actually throw these away. Uh, and this thing looks automatically a whole less goofy. Okay, let's take a look at our thrust away ratio because we did do some fiddling about. And after a bit more tweaking, Got a thrust to weight ratio at sea level, 1.33, a total vacuum delta V of 3,875. So let's launch this thing. All right, so here she is, and our crew here is Valentina and Bob. They're gonna go up there and keep Jebediah company. Now I have talked about rendezvous before, so I'm not gonna go through all that again. Jebediah is in a 120 kilometer orbit, so we're going to launch into a lower orbit of 80 kilometers, and we also want to launch so that Jebediah is ahead of us. All right, there we are, we are in an orbit. Next is setting up the drift burn to get us out to Jebediah in the station, which of course we inserted into orbit last episode. Now one thing that's a little nice is instead of using thrust to kind of tweak in this closest approach, you can actually now use RCS. So I can press H to thrust more forward. And you can see that's making this intersect a little better. Let's do another H, another H. 47 meters, okay, we're gonna leave it like that. And if I needed to thrust backwards, I could have used the N key to thrust backwards. So RCS doesn't need to be just for docking, it can also be for fine orbital adjustments as well. And if what you're struggling with is getting two vessels close together like these two are, then what you really need a hand with is rendezvous. And if that is the case, make sure to check out this video here for help with that, because this video is really specifically about docking. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna zero out my velocity, and this will give us time to talk about it. So first of all though, First thing you wanna do is you want to control your vessel from your docking port. This is especially important if the docking port happens to be a different orientation than the actual capsule. This one isn't, but it's a good habit to get into. So you right click on your docking port, and you say control from here. Then using the bracket keys, you switch over to your vessel and you select one of their docking ports. And what I like to do is just pin it over here to the side then I'll come back and then I get the option here to set that as a target. So now my target is actually the docking port rather than the center of mass of my station. And I got an icon here, an anti-target icon, but I also have a target icon here. I'm going to go right on the target icon and our velocities are very small. So I'm just going to put on my RCS. I'm going to press H. I'm going to start moving a little bit towards the target icon like that. Now, I would suggest at this point, 
you start practicing with your RCS controls. We have a lot of monopropellant. Do yourself a quick save and just practice with this. So if we take a look at the nav ball, I would like to be able to move this prograde vector around. So there is a docking mode that you can click. And what this does is it changes the WASD keys from turning the vessel left, right, and up and down to translations left, right, or port starboard and ventral dorsal. So like for instance, now if I push the A key, right, this is not pushing me, not turning the vessel, it's just moving it. But what I want you to do, notice how I can move the prograde vector around. So practice moving it around using the WASD keys. If you lose it, that just means you're not going forward fast enough. So press H a couple of times to move it forward. Right. And you can put that right on your target and that means you're moving towards your target. So spend a little bit of time. Practice moving that prograde vector around using the WASD keys until you feel like you're getting it you know, you got a feel for how to put this wherever it is you want it to be. Now, wherever this is, that's where you're going to be pulling your vessel towards. So now I'm pulling my vessel towards my target icon like that. Now, you if you don't like the docking mode, there's another alternative. I personally don't use the docking mode. If you take it out of docking mode, WASD is again back to rotating the vessel about. But now the IJK keys are doing the same thing that the WSD keys were doing before. Personally, I kind of like to have both the WSD keys active and the IJKK, IJKK? IJKL keys active at the same time so I can do both orienting the vessel and doing my translating as well. And again, give yourself some time to practice. Don't, uh, you know, don't feel like you need to do it all. We got a lot of monopropellant up here at the right. We can keep track of our monopropellant. You can see how much we still have. Notice as well how I don't use monopropellant when I use the WASD keys, which is really, really nice. That's because we toggled off these actuation toggles. All right, now how can we facilitate our docking a little bit better? Well, the toughest thing with docking is lining up the two docking ports. Get the plane of this port to be the same as the plane of that port. And the easiest way to get those two planes to align is to hop over to the other vessel and orient this vessel so that it is on the normal vector. And if you're in an equatorial orbit, the normal vector is north and south like that. Now, why does this help? This helps because as we orbit around the body, Kerbin in this case, this is the only direction, which is the direction that is perpendicular to the plane of our orbit, that direction never changes as we orbit. So if this is pointing to the north, it will always point to the north. If you point it any other direction, those directions are going to change as we orbit the planet. So if this is a nice constant direction. Now I'm going to push the square bracket key again. And now if I want to align my docking ports, all I have to do is rotate this one to the south. South being 180 degrees on the nav ball right on the horizon and now guaranteed this docking port and this docking port are in the right plane now unfortunately we're sort of far apart so let's go back to our target icon and let's actually now give ourselves a little bit of push in that direction like that i'm also going to put the view on orbital orbital is a nice consistent view because orbital always has up as being north so north on this uh, up on the screen is now north i can see from this that i would like to move north of this docking port so i'm going to look at my nav ball i'm going to give myself a little bit of forward velocity there's my north line so i'm going to use the ijkl keys to move that over towards north and now this guy is moving towards the north of this docking port so i'll end up above it like that Okay, I'm also going to give myself a little bit more speed with some H. Let's get this up to maybe about half a meter. Let's get over there. Let's see if we can go more than half a meter. Or so. 
There we go. Again, I'll use the J key to push that over that way so I can see I'm gonna go north of my target. Okay, now I know I'm moving in the right direction. So I'm gonna go back to my south line. And now I should be moving the way I want. Now I'm going pretty quick. Let's actually slow ourselves down here. I'm gonna put on the prograde vector. R, R, N. N slows me down in this case. There we go, going a little quick. Okay, back on south. I can tell visually I need to go upwards. So that's N. You know, and again, practice with this. Get used to what each key does. And what I'm looking for is the target icon appearing somewhere on the screen. I can see I need to come. Now I'm, now I'm actually experimenting. Oh, there is my target icon over here on the screen. So I need to go towards that. There's my retrograde icon. If I put, there we go. Everything's backwards when you're going retrograde. If I put the retrograde icon on the opposite side from the target icon from my bird, that gets me going in the right direction. Now you can see here I'm significantly above. So I'm going to start moving down. And down on the screen is forward for my vessel. I'm going to move until I see that prograde vector. There it is. I'm going to use a bit of the, I just pushed K there. I want these three vectors all in a line. And with prograde over here, your vessel always gets pulled towards the prograde. So now it's being pulled towards this target icon on the nav ball. Again, get used to using your nav ball. Okay, I'm moving towards the target icon. So now what I want to do is move the prograde icon towards the target icon. Gradually moving, just kind of following it along. My speed is very, very low, so let's move towards the docking port a little bit more. And I'm keeping this prograde icon on the opposite side of the target from my vessel. But because I'm pointing south and this is pointing north, I know that that orientation doesn't change. So I just keep kind of herding that target, looking at my nav ball, herding it in. until they are all right on top of each other, in which case you put the prograde right on top of your target. And there they go, they are docked. As easy as that, and our contract has gone green. And while Jebediah welcomes aboard his new shipmates, let's take a moment to go over the main takeaways from this episode. First, RCS requires monopropellant, Make sure to have enough on board, and don't forget, there's monoprop already in the capsules. Put on enough RCS blocks so that your thrust is balanced around the center of mass, regardless of the direction you thrust. Also, toggling off the roll, pitch, and yaw on your RCS blocks is a good way to save on monoprop. When docking, orient the target vessel along the normal vector. This will make lining up the docking ports much easier and get used to using the nav ball when docking. This makes things easier as the lateral directions are always the same on the nav ball. And finally, give yourself permission to practice. Navigating in three space is not easy, but with a little bit of practice, docking can become one of the most rewarding activities in this game. And with that, I'm gonna be drawing this episode to a close. Join me next week, where we will be returning to the moon to haul in some science. I hope to see you then.